Tom was a very creative letter writer. He was writing to Felix Jones, uh, his friend here in London. This is in the 60s. Tom had visited London several times and he was really digging the whole sort of um, underground leather scene back then. And Tom was very sort of one of the active arms in the creating of the look of the, of the gay leather man. When he discovered Marlon Brando and the look of the American black leather jacket uh, uh, in the early, um, it was like 1953, um, uh, he just was, and uh, he started drawing everything that was previously in brown or woolens and he made them into black leather. So there were like motorcycle leather joppers and, and an officer's cap and things like this. So you understand that London was like, it was, it was bursting. It was this growing kind of, of organic uh, cultural thing within the subculture, uh, the underground culture um, of, of gay life. And he said, dear Felix, he says, it's really hard for me to tell you this, but uh, I'm afraid that I cannot move to London and become Tom of London because the male customs uh, are so intrusive within Great Britain that I'd never be able to continue my, 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 my cottage business of, of selling prints and selling my originals through uh, my contacts through the mail. And so, alas, I'm going to have to stay here in Finland. He became world famous before the internet existed. Back then, what had to happen is that everything had to reside inside of an envelope the size of an airmail envelope and so he had to make his own photo development and he also could not send i mean he could send an original piece but very rarely would he ever do that because they would open it in most countries so he had to make his catalogs of all of the different images that these guys would order from and they would order, you know, I'll take A4 and uh, D5, and he would then have to take and make a print that big of that particular drawing. And he had like, you know, maybe 30 or 40 different drawings that people could pick from. And then they would send him money from their country. So can you imagine the amount of, uh, of different currencies that he would actually have to process? And what is the remaining thing that we have at the foundation, which is sort of the telltale of that? And what it is, and he never told me what it was, but it, it all came to place, is that we have a, a bag, a plastic bag, that is full of stamps that are the size of a beach ball. So imagine this big, filled with canceled stamps from all over the world. And those were the thing, that was the one thing he kept. So whenever he would get correspondence, he would tear off the stamp and he'd keep the stamp. And uh, he would dispose of, uh, of all of the correspondence. This is probably one of the things I, you know, if I could ever want to sort of hang him, I would, because what he did is he destroyed all letters from anyone who wrote him, um, because he felt it was an infringement upon their privacy. And he came from a generation where this kind of thing could actually be very incriminating. And so uh, he felt it his obligation and responsibility to dispose of that. And so he, re he really, I mean, he got rid of everything. And um, uh, so, um, we, what we have is we have his letters to me, to Felix Jones, to other people who've actually saved their letters and then have turned them over to the foundation. So they have been a lot of the backstory of that.